the Rat King. Stepping to your front doorstep. A little bit of sweat coming down his butt crack to show both fear and excitement on the scene. But who knows? Maybe Johnny Appleseed likes it. (laughs) On scale one to ten, how good do I sound? Is it clear? Totally, absolutely spectacular. The closer you lean into your mic, the um, the worse it sounds. So try to resist that temptation. All right. Hold on. Check it out, dude. Your your fucking audio just went again. Did you press the button? No, I didn't, dude. Yes, you did. You pressed the button. I did press the button. <laughs> I knew it. See, I really want to wear my glasses because they look great, but I can't see shit. Yeah, but you don't need to be able to see anything as a thing. I don't know. I don't know. I'm the kind of man who likes to at least have a little bit of awareness in the surroundings. Oh, what, do you got? what are you wearing today? Peripherals are overrated. <clears throat> well, I introduced my new sponsor here. This is Gecko Unlimited. They're uh, Maui based, I believe. It's a it's a leisure coat. It's like a 1980s brand, right? Yeah, dude. I grew up entirely on Gecko. All right, let's let's go let's go let's go top to bottom, bottom to top, bottom to top. What are you wearing in your feet? Uh, L.L. Bean. Oh, oh shit! You're bold. You, I mean, <laughs> I'm wearing L.L. Bean box too. A little bit of Lulu. Lulu. Protecting the rumpus. Yeah, I'm uh, no undershirt, of course, because I'm Italian. I'm always wearing uh, Nike uh, sweatpants, cargo fly. shirt. That's very fly. Comfort is king. All right. So you're talking about Gecko. Your boy's got limited edition Tropic Thunder Chubby's uh, flannel. Uh, flannel That's good. On. Looks cozy. And for all you listeners out there, the most important part is that we both have our safety orange on. It's hunting season. Not 100%. Shot. Inside My- or outside the home. Be safe. Yeah. Uh, it Turkey rooster season out here. What do you hey, got? See, I got clipped earlier. Right on, right on the nose. That's why I got this little plug in there. Dude, I'm telling you right now. So check this out. One of my friends put me onto this. This hold, is a hold little. On, wait, wait, did, wait, wait. Does this sound better? How about now? Audio is clear. See what you're not realizing okay, is because we're both am we're novice podcasters. Just even that small little piece of uh, toilet paper stuffed up your nose, completely. Th- <laughs> you have blood on your teeth. That was disgusting. <laughs> Oh, well, dude, man. you made me laugh, and I I snort when I laugh, and it blood rocketed out. And dude, did one I'm of those things where it projects out, like Big Daddy caught and then curled back under. That's what you get for having that but face. We'll wash, we'll, we'll wash it down with a little gel. See that day. What do you got in your cup there? My friend, hold on. I'm just gonna tell you. My friend put me onto this. This right here. You see that? Yeah. Looks like something will prevent prevent people from having babies but you actually put it up your nose and it bridges your nose open when you sleep and i swear i wake up like i hit like a crack pipe like it gives i have so much energy do you think if you took that same device and you and you put it up your hiney you would uh prevent butt babies i think bacteria would grow I stay away from all things. I told you that I got a hemorrhoid, like my first adult hemorrhoid because I did that military test. Yeah. And uh, so guys, just to give you a little update, I've been messing around with a YouTube channel. And like one thing that's growing pretty, pretty popular is this military combat test. So I just went in raw and I didn't put a belt on because I don't think you're allowed a belt. And I just went plate after plate after plate. And you, you're topped out at 340, but we didn't have a trap bar. So I just put on... I put on 415 pounds to show that I could do way over the work just so that people wouldn't question me. No belt, no warm up, And I blew a blood vessel down there in the undercarriage and it yeah, lasted yeah. for weeks. So just to quickly recap that it's a, what's it like six deadlift or something? And then three deadlift max at 340 with a trap bar. Um, then you're doing push-ups, two minute tests, but it's like weird. You hit this and then you chuck out. It's really weird. Um, yeah. you know, and then it's like, a, it's like a twisty pull-up thing, right? Where you have to like contort That's the your body. Part. Like- That's the weirdest part. So it's like knee to elbows, but there's like no real, like exact extension over the top. 
the shuttle run's probably the coolest thing because it actually makes sense. Like if you're in the military and people are like giving you shit, you're gonna have to run from here to there, and then you're gonna have to run from here to there, and you're gonna have shit. Like in a your beep hands. test. Kind of like a beep test with like just random equipment, sled drag, um, shuffle to the side, run forward, run backwards. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just, it makes sense. Um, overall, I would say the test is like a C plus B minus. When we were like hanging out with McNamara I mean, down there at Evolution Athletics, like remember the stuff that he was telling us that he put his guys through? Yeah. Made a little bit more sense. It was a similar spectrum of things being tested, but his made more sense. Yeah. I mean, working out with these these guys in the tackle games events now, um, where a lot of them are ex-military and whatnot, mm-hmm. like, their their training is like is legit it's real like i don't think that that test is a super good repre- representative of of the guys are competing in it so look life. like freaking beasts dude they're like 250 pounds yeah but they 170 got... and look like 145 damn right dude chicken hawk yeah so would you say give me a little perspective here because i i've hung out with combat guys and i would probably say the most intimidated i've ever been by other human beings was at TMX 2018 when those completely untrained, unprepared yeah. Navy or special warfare guys. I don't even know if they were Navy SEALs showed up one missing a tooth somewhere in jean shorts, made it to the semifinals of probably the most stacked competition I've ever gone to. Dude, that's exactly what this is like. You look around and it's like, this guy over here has a beer gut looks like, you know, just looks like some regular like dad bod guy. Uh, this other guy, like none of them look like none of them are ripped. None of them look like they're in fantastic shape. Seventy five percent body fat. Seventy five percent body fat, but they freaking move weight. And and I'm not talking like like kind of just like sneaky fit whatnot. Like these guys, literally, they would take like a sled drag. You'd go up against one of them, and they would just blow you out of the water. Like really? like you're standing. I I swear to God, dude, it's absolutely astonishing. Like the kind of weight these guys can move. And they're, I mean, they're like long distance cardio is not fantastic, but at the same time, like they can move, like it's, it's very, it's very deceiving. And I think it's just the amount of Jack Daniels and Budweiser are you like, you're required to consume That's carb to, to stay in, to stay in the military is, uh, is where all that, that body fat comes from. But so help me out here for a second. Um, I am not even fully aware what the tactical games is. I've been hearing about it for a while now i don't know who first introduced it to me maybe it was killian then you came onto the scene now i hear that hepner and fraser are going to go onto the scene um anybody who's paying attention including myself what is the tactical games how is it tested because we're doing a little bit of an update here i want to know what the heck you've been up to and what you're planning on doing so uh, basically it's exactly the same kind of stuff we've been doing for the last three years you know take tmx high rocks even kind of Spartan stadium type stuff. Uh, the throwdown we did in Tahoe, uh, your Spartan games up in, uh, up in Vermont, take those and add in shooting, right? So you're carrying a weight vest, a Murph challenge, another perfect example. Um, you've got a 15 pound weight vest, you've got a pistol on your hip, and then you've got a long gun strapped across your back. And there's eight events over the course of a weekend, each event, I'd say six or seven of the eight events involve shooting, right? So you're carrying firearms with you. Um, Maybe one or two of them sometimes will just be strictly a fitness test. But for the ones, all the ones that involve shooting, you'll basically do like a good example is you sprint out a hundred meters. You have to do some sandbag cleans, then take your sandbag, run it around a quarter mile track, come back, carry a Hussefell stone, shoot, let's say 30 rounds at a target with your pistol, go back, do that same sandbag, clean sandbag loop, uh, and Hussefell stone, strongman stuff, come back, shoot 30 rounds with your rifle. Right. So you're just combining fitness and shooting. And the whole point is to basically test how well that you can like stay accurate and composed under pressure. And, you know, when you're fatigued out of breath, would you say, that you're going to be a contender or a hobbyist? I am I mean, I don't get into anything without the intention of winning. You know that, you know, whether it's I'm a, not... a, a wake up rock, paper, scissors, shoe game, you know, hair pulling contest, whatever. I'm in it to win it. 
I'm telling you right now, dude, I wouldn't even get into this thing unless you were willing to bring a little bit of the same energy. Right before we got on this call, I was watching WWE highlights from back in like the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. And I think you got to bring that kind of energy. I understand these guys have guns, but get in their faces. Let them know. Listen, I, like, I, you're I lady, set my alarm my last lady night. Now. I, your I, rifle, I told, my rifle now. I told Alexa, you wake me up with Rick Ross tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And that's Ross, how we're getting the day Ross, started. Ross, 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 Ross. Exactly, exactly. I'm surprised um, Ross hasn't died of diabetes at this point. No, have you heard of Ross Fit? I know, dude. A guy from he CrossFit just, he just ended up like pears. living with him. It's easy. He just eats pears. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> Go look it up. We don't have time to talk about this. We got to stay on on subject. But now, so I'm coming in fully with the intention of to to stay as modest as possible with winning the entire thing. So and you've gotten two fourth place finishes. Two fourth place finishes. Uh, in my first two events, and I'm learning that one of the most difficult things, which I really I should give this heads up to both Hepner, who's planning to come into the event in May, and Frazier, that one of the biggest challenges is just I call it like accident mitigation, right? Because there's so much technical stuff going on. Like think about a normal think about you're competing in high rocks, your shoe comes untied, you forgot your carbohydrates in the hotel, like all this little stuff that can go wrong. Now think about you've got two mechanical tools you're carrying with you through sand and dirt, whatnot. Like there's more stuff that can go wrong. So part of the, like part of the whole challenge of this thing is just how do you keep all of your tools working correctly and mitigate any accidents that happen? Because I'm planning on competing by the way, with a double barrel shotgun and a 44 Magnum from dirty, dirty Harry. So the Hunter, the last competition I was at, I had at least three guys, who were like, hey, how do we get Hunter to come into this competition? And I said, he would love to do it. He just doesn't have the, the equipment and probably legally is not allowed to own the equipment because of his criminal background. Everyone, and, every time I get seen with a pair of scissors, they take it from me. I'm limited by the toys that I'm allowed to but use. But these guys, so the guys I'm talking to, they're both, they're both uh, um, high level SWAT guys. And they're like, no problem, man. We'll hook them up. You, you get them to come. We'll, we'll take care of everything else. So if they're, if these are, you know, trained police officers are willing to put a firearm in your hands and let you run, <laughs> run around like a wild man on this course, like I'm not going to tell them no. All right. I'm sold, dude. So that's what you got going on. And by the way, I feel like we did, like, we definitely skipped past. I was actually trying to have some kind of like order of ascension through this thing. Dude, me too. I got a list. I got a list with bullet points here. I know. I got a list of bullet points too, but here's the issue. Fuck. We shot right past it. We have get excited, we're, man. I <laughs> know, I know. Well, listen, Kempson and I actually, and this is really funny, dude. This notebook that I pulled out is actually around the same time that we started this originally. Kempson and I, at the beginning of quarantine, I'm talking about like March 15th, started this show. We were going to call it the Morningwood Radio Show. Fascinating men having fascinating conversations. And we started this thing and we recorded it and we had to basically shut the whole thing down because it like i was trying to talk about it with brock this morning he's like what happened to that thing and it basically we had to button this thing up and shut it down because within probably a week or two of us starting this thing COVID hit so hard that we were like nailing the door shut so that we couldn't let other yeah. people into our houses we, we were really yeah we, uh, we went into our bunker we, lo- we loaded up on booze <laughs> rice and black beans and just hungered down I was basically only eating ribeye and drinking 40 ounce beers of malt liquor. Both. <laughs> that's, that's, that is the most factual statement I've probably heard you say this month. Cause that's entirely true. They remember they, they tried to close down the liquor stores and me, you and Johnny, I think who Johnny hasn't had a sip of beer in like 14 years. We took a freaking milk crate and filled it up with 40 ounce. Uh, I don't know. Old English or something like that. I've drank more beer this last year than I have probably in the last five years. And I drink Fantastic. a ton. I know. And I don't really feel bad about it. Like I'm actually, I'm no. pretty primed. I'm, I've been carb loading for weeks and months, but now any, we're, we're, anytime when, when people ask me about that, I say, you know, a lot of people have like a glass of whiskey or a beer at the end of the night, just to like calm down and, and just, you know, ease into the night. Yeah. I just take that same glass or two of whiskey that they would have at sure. nighttime, maybe three. 
and you just have it during the day at some you know random undisclosed time. It just makes life more fun. Nothing wrong with that, brother. My grandmother oh. started drinking wine spritzers at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. every single morning. I don't even know how. She goes, get me a spritzer. And I was like, is there wine in that, Graham? She goes, no, she it's a spritzer. It. Yeah, I'm not even sure what a wine spritzer is. It's basically is. It's just like grape juice with bubbles. So yeah, we're, re- we're relaunching Morningwood Radio. And it basically was the idea of, uh, of a way to stay connected, have fun, and uh, you know, at least have a, a conversation about what our thoughts are. And I think at this point, this is a perfect time to relaunch because people need a bright star in the sky to follow at this point because people are questioning, they're like, do we go back out? Do we do this? Do we load up on firearms and join the tactical games? We're the people who are willing to relay that information. And the truthful answer is, is yes to all of those things. <laughs> yes to all of the above. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, you got tactical games. Um, what else is an update here? Are you going to come to High Rocks April 10th in Dallas, Dallas, Texas? I'll be there. All right. We I love got that, that. Night, man. I, there's no way I'm missing that with all, right. uh, all, my, all my homies. We haven't got to race together in like 400 years. And uh, everybody's going to be there. The cameras, big lights, big action. Mm-hmm. I'm there. Dallas does it better. Okay. Another update. Debbie, Debbie does Dallas is actually the, the Debbie does there. Dallas. Dude, I have to say something. This is actually at the top of the list. I wanted to mention it first. I don't know what the heck happened, but I did the marathon and the back of my thighs are itchy all the time now. Has that ever happened to you? If my skin's dry. I, I started dry? rubbing lotion specifically just on the back of my thighs. I feel creepy just saying that. Who puts lotion on the back of their thighs? Someone who has sensitive skin. Exactly. I don't feel comfortable about it, but I'm, I'm a man a of vulnerability these days, guys. I'm a 21st century man, a Renaissance man, vulnerable, strong, artistic, autistic. Aut- yeah. Okay. I've got, got it corrected. That one. Yeah, exactly. Um, by so, the way, so, people- so um, wait, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into the marathon for you. Cause I watched, I watched that YouTube video and I, I'll admit, I don't really, <clears throat> I don't watch a lot of, uh, a lot of the content that you put out there. But uh, I, I saw I saw that come across my Instagram feed. I was like, you know what? I would really like to see, to watch someone who has not prepared in the slightest for a marathon in within the last two, three years, just jump in and try to run sub three. Even though I know you're like maintain a pretty, pretty good high level of fitness all the time. Like that's still pretty, pretty ass kicking uh, endeavor to, to, to take, take on. And I thought it was, I thought it was pretty interesting to watch. Thanks, dude. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, and I, I say that with some surprise because, I, you know, I, I, that's not always what I say about the con- your content. So, well, part of me wants to hit you and the other part wants to shake your hand. I would say it was an interesting thing to just, it was an interesting task, but also Nick is doing a very, very good job at capturing what we're doing and putting it out there. The three hour marathon was something that I was like, I could definitely do this, but I was terrified leading up to it. And it, I was like, it was so cool. It, it was this arc of like fear, 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 competing, so happy, having a blast. And then afterwards I stayed on the shelf of just like feeling like a million bucks. And then next yeah. thing you know, I freaking cracked. And then that, for like, like that th- afternoon or days later, no days later, dude, I came home. I went right back to doing like heavy lifting, training for Murph, training for high rocks, and then next thing you know, on a Wednesday, the following Wednesday, I did a bike ride, two hour bike ride with my friend. And I was riding up in the hills and I was like, dude, there's something wrong. There's something Scared really me. wrong with me. And I've been in a slump for a while, but I'm finally coming out. And now I can honestly say I'm, I'm very energized to do uh, marathon training. I think it's going to be, well, really, this helps really a lot. Cool. What's it's that? The energy that Morningwood radio brings, at least to my life. Stiff, uh, it's, it's, a stiff it's cup crap. of coffee and a stiff piece of it's wood crap. is all you need to start the day. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to keep this rolling so we can get all cover all the topics. That Share we all your emotions. Just get it out. There's a lot on the docket. Uh, let's talk Murph for a second here. And I think what, what people really want to know, and I've been getting a lot of questions about is what, what's the time to beat going to be this year? What's it going to take to reset that record? Cause it's, it's going to be broken. What are we at? 34, 33. Right now? I think basically the best that I can imagine people doing is between 31 and 30. And I think it's very possible. Like you had people like yourself, you have people like Wooly, you got people like uh, 
what's the name of that little guy from Texas who was like a wrestler in top 10 in uh, Spartan Race World Championships? Oh, you're thinking of um, Forrest. Forrest Bouge? Yeah, yeah. He's up. No, he's out of like Saskatchewan or something, I think. Lake Saskatch. So like there's those guys. But so the way that I'm, I'm trying to structure it right now is we're going to call it the Memorial Day Invitational because I don't think we're really able to use the name Murph. Um, I remember when we were setting up for this thing, there was a lot of military people that like really hold this so dear to themselves. They actually get very ornery about it. Which which is funny, man, because with all the, the, the military and ex-military guys I've been competing with at the, at the tactical games, they're the most genuine down to earth people. So I don't know where... Like none of those guys would ever have an issue with us trying to do what we're trying to do with Murph. Like they, yeah. they're all about it. It's except for Josh just Bridges, like internet keyboard warriors. Josh Bridges was a total dick. Yeah, well, and you know, uh, there's a handful of people out there. So there. we're gonna rebrand it as the Memorial Day I, challenge. I hate to say that because, and I mean, neither of us really know the guy very well personally. Uh, but and 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 he he clearly has done some fantastic things for this country, but like, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick, dude. You know, All right. We're just a couple of bros <laughs> working out in the garage. It. Exactly. Like we take ourselves about as seriously as a, you know, a, a blood blister. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> this guy needs to get off the shelf, dude. So we're exactly. going to call it the Memorial day invitational. And here's the structure of it. Uh, I'm trying to set this up where, you as an individual can come in because we're trying to actually do more for RWB rather than just the workout itself. Our goal is basically to come in. I'm asking every single person to come in to bring in a $5,000 donation and you can have any sponsor on top of it. Like Cabela's could sponsor you. Nike could sponsor you. Your engineering company can sponsor you and you can wear it representing that team. And at the end, we're going to have about 10 to 20 people on the male and female side, and it's all going to go in towards the charity. And it's going to put a little bit of, and we're going to build a big trophy and stuff. There's going to be, it's almost going to be like the Super Bowl trophy getting passed off every single year. We're going to try to build this thing up to, of some kind of significance. And also, now that I have you here, can we use your metal making skills to make something really, really awesome to pass off? Yes. Yes. So I think that will be awesome. Uh, and we'll be, it will be an international competition down in uh, Pinecrest, Pinehurst, Pine Knob. What was the name of the town? West End? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's uh, Fort Bragg. Let's go with Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg, right down there in Fort Bragg. So that's, 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 that's on the horizon, dude. I mean, you only got a couple of months out. I'm right now trying to see if I can do 100 push-ups in my weight vest without breaking right now that I would love to see you do that right now. Cause I don't know anybody. I can't, I can't right now. I can't, I can't is my point. Yeah. I'm building. You think you could go a hundred <laughs> unbroken in the competition and then break up your, la your second hundred. Well, the way that I'm designing training right now is it's going to be, <clears throat> excuse me. The way that I'm designing the training right now is I'm trying to build like insanely big EMOM sets one day yep. a week and then insanely high volume another day a week. And I'm trying to just really just go out for a big set. Like I'll do a set of hundred hundred to 150 in a workout and just see if I can go unbroken. Like I started to do that with squats too, but the biggest thing that I recognized last year with it was just lactic acid buildup. So I'm trying to see if I can test that, test that uh, modality and see if I could do a little bit better, but who knows? Um, enough I mean, about working. We came working. into it cold last year, you know? What's that? We came into a cold last year. Yeah, no, I think uh, it was a little raw, unpolished, but we're polished and no longer raw. Uh, I want to mention something, people. I have bought a training house. We're growing up to be adults, and I'm hoping K-Dog will come out and we can turn this thing into a training abode. Uh, this is going to be starting in late March, but attached to that is the birthday party that we're going to be doing. I'm, I'm aiming for safari theme. I'm in. I told you. You, I think you have <clears throat> long neck giraffe written all over you. I'm thinking a little body paint. Could you help Maybe, me out here? Uh, What's the short neck like giraffe look like? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I pay a nickel I've to go to, to that zoo. I want to know what a short neck giraffe looks like. I, I haven't. I haven't been to Africa, but I've been to the zoo. I've seen the long necks. I know what their predatory habits are. I know 
what their diet entails. I know it, they have very uh, gritty tongues, which I think really true. lines up well with your character. I have this creepy obsession with going on like animal Instagrams and there's a lot of information about what's going on with like animals. And the grossest thing that I've discovered by going to a lot of animal Instagrams is animal tongues. Like a jaguar tongue literally looks like it has hooks going backwards. Like it's meant to like lick and like rip. Yeah. It's disgusting. Have you ever seen the inside of a turtle's yeah. mouth? Disgusting. It's, it's, it's the scariest thing you've ever witnessed in the entire world. Luckily, girlfriend doesn't look like that. Um, but <laughs> uh, I, I don't even like looking inside the, a lot of girls' mouths, to be honest no. with you. Like, I'm finding more, as you know, as I gain more wisdom in this life, I realize they're kind of foul creatures. They are foul creatures. Can I ask you a quick question? What was the last time you went to the dentist? Me? Yeah. Uh, probably a year and a half, two years ago, five to six years for me. Good. Good for you. And I don't know if my teeth are getting better or worse. Honestly, I think as long as they don't give you physical pain and they're aesthetically pleasing to the other people that you, you know, spend your time around, but who cares? I had uh, a dentist last time I went in, it was around 2014. So maybe it's like seven years ago telling me they're like, Hey, you've got like eight or nine cavities. We're going to have to do some work. I was like, what? I was like, I feel like a million bucks. Right. Out, All these out of there and never came back. Never came back. <laughs> I also had a doctor tell me in 2018 before um, you were there at the race, when we were racing that stadium race, I rolled my ankle and he was okay. like, you're going to have to have surgery on this thing. And you're not going to be able to walk for like up. You're not going to be able to compete again for six months. And you're not going to be able to walk for eight weeks. He's like, you're totally going to need reconstructive surgery on this thing. I was like, what? Dude, Dude. I'm, I'm telling you, and I apologize to anybody who spent eight years going to doctor school, but you can't trust those people. When I had my knee surgery last year, after, uh, so I got my MRI for my knee, and then they wanted to x-ray my hips, just, I don't know, they heard a clicking or something. And the guy was about to do double hip labrum repair surgery, wanted to cut my femur in half and rotate it so that I had like a better, like, I don't know, angle from my hip to my knee to my ship or something like that. And he's going to hack me up. Like I was going to look like freaking RoboCop. And, uh, I had no pain from it at the time. Now here we are a year and a half later, still no pain. Like the dude was about to cut me open. What's that about? I think we should turn it around on them, put them on the table and be like, Hey, exactly. listen, you're uh, you got a funny looking face and uh, I don't like the way your hips look. Yeah. Let's like, I dissected this. a frog in middle school. Exactly. I don't know, man. I hate the medical industry. I think this entire year has actually made me a little bit more of a skeptic of the entirety of the world. And I'm about to get into witchcraft. And I think that's all I basically need. I've been getting into <laughs> astrology actually this year. I thoroughly believe in that. You're going to start doing palm reading? That's next, man. I actually, I just want someone to read my palm to be honest with you. But I tell that to everybody I talk to, like, especially girls and stuff. And a lot of people look at me like I'm, I'm freaking insane. Dude, I think you should just move up into the mountains. I think we get adjacent cabins from each other. You do palm reading and, and woodwork and metal work. I will sell elixirs from my, my cauldron and we'll come together. We'll converge. We could basically at this point, get rid of all this technology, run two microphones, meaning tea, tin Candy. cups and string yeah, string. Yeah. And do the same exact thing, man. I just, uh, I think that, I don't know, this entire year has made me question my involvement with society. I will always be a per, pe uh, a man of the people. Like I want to be around people, but I don't want to be around the structure of society anymore. I'm confused. I'm conflicted. And I want to start my own country now. It's, it's, it's heading in a bad direction. And have you ever I, read about Hunter S. Thompson? Yeah. Oh, all the time. Dude, look at what he did. This man was a genius. He did so many drugs uh, that he broke through the portal of reality. Our, our understanding of reality went into his own version of understanding reality. And all he did was drive fast motorcycles, do tons of drugs, and shoot guns all the time. And he was running for sheriff of Aspen. I was like, dude, those are all the things that I kind of want to do. Be between, the, between the amount, uh, the, the level of drugs that you're capable of consuming, and then I'm always riding motorcycles and shooting guns all the time, we're basically there. We are. I think we just need to transcend through this portal dimension of time and space into the next sphere of, the, of existence. Yeah. 
I think we're already here, dude. The fact that we're having this conversation already opens us up to the opportunities. I know. Yeah. Well, so the so, last but not least, I just got to button this thing up. Otherwise, we're going to lose our, 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 our uh, recording capabilities because it's limited by this. So we're, I, I've had I've had a timer going that I started. I don't at some point into the conversations. It says 16 minutes plus 16 minutes factor, plus an unknown factor of time. I guess 10 minutes, maybe. So we're really 20, 25 minutes. We're at 25 yeah. minutes right now. Yeah. All right. So let me know specifically when we hit in your mind 30. OK. Uh, so I got a couple points I want to talk about left on here. All right. Unless, hit it, unless you got something that's just like on the tip of your tongue. There's nothing on the tip of my tongue. I just, I, I, I'm listen. I'm a novice to this whole thing. I just know that we're, we are confined by, by our time limit on this thing. Okay. So what we got, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of construction in the, in the future here. Um, okay, fill me in, you, fill me you've in. got your, you've got your house up in California yeah. uh, that you, you're closing on next month, right? As long Hopefully, as you don't find, March 15th, as as, I should have keys. As long as you don't find any uh, bees in the attic or, uh, you know, already did inspections. Really? No skeletons in the closet? Nothing, dude. I was so convinced. I showed up and the guy who owned the house was just there drinking. And he was actually a really cool guy. He was walking around the property drinking and telling me all about the house. And he was just telling me about how things got built. And he was like, yeah, I don't really remember it. I was drinking when I did that. He was the man, the coolest. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. So I, I think we need to establish a couple uh, ground rules for, yeah. for your property. I'm just going to I'm just going to insert myself in here. If you're going to have me help you know, construct some, some some buildings on the property, yeah. um, I think all nude hot tub, mandatory. All nude, yes. Probably all nude sauna too. You're gonna have to put a sauna in up there. Dude, I've been researching sauna tubes, by the way. I was like, oh man, this always seemed like such a cool idea. They're like five to ten thousand dollars. Remember when we were talking about getting one? Yes. Insanely expensive. We, so Dil, Dil Morali is putting one in his basement up in Longmont right now. And he's gonna do it for like a shoestring budget. So a sauna tube? I don't know why you're a, a sauna tube is something that is like the structural platform to build a house off of a sauna is the thing that you go that gets hot and you go inside of. Okay. Listen, it's just the, the tube. Okay. If you want to come up and show me how to do this on a shoestring budget, I've been Googling all over the internet. It's insanely expensive. I don't know who the people who have the money for these things. Like every influencer on the internet that I know has one of these sauna tubes and it drives me fucking nuts. Cause I know they're I think all every, Every influencer on the internet you're talking about really just like goes over to their rich friend's house and pretends they live there. I don't really believe like all these people like, are really doing what they're saying they're doing. Trust me. I don't know anybody who's actually bought one is my point. Exactly. Exactly. So you've got your cabin going up in California. Uh, my brother just bought a piece of property up in New Hampshire. That as soon as the, uh, the snow melts this spring, we're going to start building a, uh, a training cabin up in the White Mountains up there. I'll be spending a lot of time up in uh, New Hampshire. Yeah. And, uh, and then in my, in my future, I'm, I'm looking at some investment properties in the uh, greater New York city area where I'll be uh, swinging some hammers too. <laughs> what, what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> if I told you, uh, wouldn't be oh, we were it. turning phones off for this, man. Worse than that. Are you, I'll tell you. Are you breaching, yeah. are you breaching trust? No, look, cell phone's over here. Okay. okay. I'll let you use your imagination. Um, <laughs> did, you, did you did you let one rip? <laughs> it's not appropriate. I'll tell you afterwards. Um, so basically, that's for, that's for our fans only. <laughs> fans <laughs> only. Fans you only have to account. pay for that content. <laughs> Speaking of fans only, I'm not going to use anybody's <laughs> names, and we're not going to get into the inner circle of anybody that we know. But I am starting to lose my mind a little bit that I work my ass off and I do well. Like I'm not, this is not a struggle bus conversation, but I know a lot of people in my circle, not some of my closest circles that are making a, a, a freaking bucket load, a boatload worth of money on OnlyFans. And I'm not going to lie. If you got a hold of me when I was like 20 years old, shit, I'd be a multimillionaire right now, but I can't do it. Can't do this it. This is the world. This is the world we're in. I probably think we should go around and euthanize everybody who's got a fans only account, but I know that's just I know. my that's my opinion. It's one man. Who knows? Listen, dude. There's, there's you can the look, is, you can a, look, but you better not. The truth me. is, the there's such a great selection and quantity of pornography already out there on the internet. What like what's the purpose of having all this amateur? I don't like if I if I go onto a porn website, I don't I don't search like amateur porn. 
I want the pros. You want, want the stars. That, I want the, the stars Born of people who know what they're space doing. Stars. Exactly. So I don't understand what this Search obsession bar. is with like, you know. Well, here's like, the thing, and this is what's ruining the internet. People have all of a sudden taken what Instagram and all these social media platforms have done, and they've all of a sudden turned every single person has turned themselves into a brand and monetized them. Yeah. And truth be told, of the actual people that I know in my circle, and I'm specifically in the industry where people should brand themselves, I would say less than 10%, if not less than 5% of the people that I know should actually have any kind of monetization or value or connection to their, their financial interests and their life interests through branding themselves. Yet 100%. somehow everybody thinks, well, I have an image of myself on the internet and people like it. So if people like who I am and what I'm doing, then they should want to pay me for who I am and what I'm doing. And it's destroyed the fucking internet. It's destroyed the sponsorship scene. Because now everybody who, you know, just like how Spartan Race put elite or pro in front of like that wave. Now everybody thinks that they're a pro. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, there's about 20 people to 30 people in the OCR industry who are pros. And, and of uh, those honestly, people, that's, that's, no, a, that's a, those people an overestimate though, number. There's probably less than 50% of that who actually earn money off of it. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I don't know what the heck's going on. People think that every single time that they do something, that there should be some kind of affiliate link attached to it, that there should be some kind of like, hey, I need a link tree underneath my Instagram so you can see all the things that I'm doing and be able to connect and somehow give me an earning off of it. And it's it's nuts. And it's all gotten all the way from the point where OnlyFans kind of got burned out of the fact that all these girls and like dudes online are taking more and more of their clothes off and the more and more clothes they take off on their pictures, the more their lights go up. And then all of a sudden they think, well, all of a sudden, if I have such a fan base, maybe these people want to see me completely with my clothes off and that's where it's gone to. And it's, it's nuts. Like it's no longer, you can no longer be a person. You need to be something else. I'm telling you right now, if it weren't for my, my Kemps and designs business being tied directly into social media, which I, trying to find a way to, to unlink that. But if it weren't for that, social media is gone for me. I have no interest in it whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, even like, um, I know that you, you support yourself largely off of, uh, off of sponsors and that's fantastic, but I'm like, I'm honestly, I, like I've got, I've got, um, a couple of decent sponsors right now, but for the most part, if I could, if I had to give them up in order to get rid of social media, I would do it in a heartbeat. No offense to them, but just like, just to take, completely rid myself of that world it would be the greatest feeling on earth well dude it'd be a smart thing to do i don't think like one thing that i have like a rule in my in my, it's kind of a newer rule in the past couple of years but i won't date anybody if they have a social media no. account because i just i'm like hey listen unless you i came to you and this was a part of your career i don't want anything to do with it because your validation and your lifestyle is completely oriented around this rather than this yeah. I'm and telling you, from someone who's actively in the in the dating game right now, actively. any girl who's got over aggressively, <laughs> no, uh, I'm I'm completely sworn off all sorts of uh, anything digital dating, however you want to call it. But any girl who's got over really like a thousand followers, maybe if if they're a very socially outgoing person, maybe like fifteen hundred, like you can't trust them. You can't. just can't. Because why, like, why, why are you spending that much time? Likely a gypsy. At, likely a gypsy <laughs> or a, an, an amateur pornographer or... Pornographer. Or just, yeah, Russian spy. You don't know. You've no clue. I'm telling you right now, and I've learned this over the past couple months because we've started to push our content towards YouTube. I'm actually looking at the amount of engagement and the stuff that I'm getting out of doing my, um, doing my Facebook and Instagram and it's, it's, it's starting to drop off so much because of the amount of like, there's TikTok, all these kind of things. People no longer actually want to read what you're doing in your post or see what the value of anything. They want to have like a five second, yeah. five second, like actual interaction with that post and then move on to the next thing. TikTok's retarded too. Excuse my French, but. What the fuck is TikTok? I, Why does everybody all, think that they're a professional see, dancer this now? Is, this is what I'm going to tell you TikTok is. I'm going to have to rearrange my situation here. But it literally... A girl put my boxing of, gloves on. A, a girl gets in front of the camera and she does this. She goes... 
Everyone thinks that they're a professional dancer now. And then that's like, and then you get like a hundred bajillion views and exactly. And now you're like, it's like, come on people. That's not, calm down, calm down. It's okay. Relax, relax. We've been having too much coffee. <laughs> blood, I, I put a ton of creatine down. in my drink now and my muscles are yeah. all pumped up and I'm like, I gotta hit something. To be honest, this was all hot chocolate and I'm pretty hopped up on sugar right now. Damn right, dude. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that little sugar guy. Yeah. Uh, so we, we got to move on past this this whole female and social media topic because we could stay here for no ages. it's not just females dude i actually think the You're majority right. of right. my male friends are actually the ones who are manipulating right. and using this stuff incorrectly right. and if and the really funny thing is i like i'll get on and i'll and i'll just chastise all these women for what they do and then i like turn around and look in the mirror and look at my social media account who like, are half, you half of my pictures i don't have a shirt on you know who like, is this man Given, I, I mean, I've never worn a shirt from like the time I was born. I ran around naked all the time, but, but I'm, I'm no better. I'm contributing to this problem. So it's okay. It's okay. We need to get it off our chests. Yeah. It's, it's out right. there. It's in the world. It's in the universe. All right. So, what next? So <clears throat> something I'm really excited about, and we got a yeah. lot of things. We're just kind of like summarizing these things here. We've got, I've got a, a tactical games event in Texas uh, in a few weeks. Tejas. I've got the Utah event in beginning of May with uh hepner's coming to that one so we'll have a nice little face off always a good time when we get to go smoke ahead that ahead. turn uh it's gonna be a good time but that's the plan and then we've got high rocks we're gonna back up a couple weeks high rocks april 10th april we'll 10th both be there a lot of good guys being there i see david Megita's out there stacked and um, jacked doing doing rope climbs and tire flips or whatever I, i'm gonna know, fucking destroy david Megita. please destroy that. david Megita. let's glad, dust that guy i'm glad you said that yeah so, so everybody will be there. That'll be a really good time. Uh, and even before that, we're kind of doing this reverse schedule thing here. We've got St. Patrick's Day coming up, which is one of my favorite holidays of all time. And where can you actually thinking, celebrate that now? So, so hear me out. I'm, I want to do a St. Patrick's Day challenge, right? So we like to incorporate fitness into to all our holidays and celebrations. And I'm going to kind of leave this out there for, for the, the, uh, the people to, to put some input on, but I want to do like a really, uh, uh an impressive feat. Of, of strength and fitness um, and also probably alcoholism combined in there. So I'm working on some ideas. The first thing that comes to my mind is the, the Guinness half marathon. So it's every mile, one Guinness for 12 miles or 13 point, whatever. Half you don't even know how long, how many miles are in a half Mary goes to show that you have a problem and that our solution is to figure it out through drinking and running. Exactly. So, First so you that's, need to know you have an issue. You need to witness the issue and then you need to work on the issue. Exactly. So, Counting so right now that's, that's kind of the, the, what I'm thinking of right now is the Guinness half marathon. Uh, if anybody has any other suggestions for that, I'm totally open. Uh, I'm going to be doing the calendar. It. I'm going to do it. On, exactly. Mark it down. We're going to be doing it on the beach down here, right on the boardwalk. So and uh, not even on the, Oh, it's on the 17th. Yeah. Always on the 17th. That's going to be a wet Wednesday. Did you, did you know? So like St. Patrick's Day is all about St. Patrick driving the snakes out of Ireland. Um, it was really, it's not actually physical snakes. It was the Druids. So basically driving like the natives out. It was basically the equivalent of a Christopher Columbus coming in and driving all the natives out of America. Just, that's how we, that's why we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. It's all the Christians taking over and we're going to try to knock out all the OnlyFans accounts. <laughs> That'll be March 18th. It's a new holiday. New holiday. Well, perfect. I'm sold on all those things. So that's our schedule. I'm going to put all that stuff down on the calendar. Anybody who's watching this, you put that stuff down on the calendar. If you can find us in any of these events, Kempson's obviously going to be going to the Pew Pew events. I've got High Rocks. I don't know of anything else I've got going on. I'm pushing my Headhunter series. We've got a lot of really cool stuff there going on. And um, obviously, I'm trying to recruit Kempson to come out here. Why don't you come out here for St. Patrick's Day? Or you have something going on there? I So my grandfather's 81st birthday is on St. Patrick's Day. It's like a couple of days before. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll be out there soon. As soon as you close on that house, man. Doors open. Fire that hot tub up. I'm getting in my skivvies. <laughs> All Maybe nudity. there'll be some girls there. Maybe there's some dudes there. Who knows? Who knows? We're swinging and clinging, baby. All right, so we're going to button this thing up because I think we're getting close to that timer. What's your timer say? My timer says 
29 minutes plus six or seven, probably 38 minutes, 37, 38 minutes. minutes. That's a good, that's a good number. Yeah. Episode one. So that's morning a, one 38 radio. minutes is the exact amount of time. I think that it takes uh, Bracken Crocker who does that other podcast to, to shave his head. Probably about the same amount of time. It takes Kirk DeWint to uh, trim, unbuck, trim, his beard. Unbuckle his pa- <laughs> trim his beard and unbuckle his pants to take his morning poo. Yeah. Uh, so it's a good amount of time, you know, we're competitive, dude. We got to beat their numbers. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to try to figure out how this platform works. We're not technologically savvy. I've got Liam, my assistant. He's probably going to do the majority of this work. Um, and I'm here for moral support. Anything moral support. Need. Literally nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. I called Kempson this morning. I was like, hey, man, can you send me over the information Bracken sent over? He sends me two screenshots that if he read through it actually himself, he'd realize had zero relevant information to what we needed. I was like, yo, I just read these things over. There's no information here. He's like, well, that's all I cause, have. Because Bracken's, Bracken's not doing video. We're doing video because we have we have, we have have TV faces, not radio faces, you know? This is, this is true. You can't and then I got all the information the we needed. We got the information we needed from, uh, I'm still itching the back of my thighs, damn it, from Matt B. Davis. And uh, from that point on, now we have a show. So I have no clue how long it's going to take for this to get up on the internet. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. I'm understanding this is how social media works now. And if you guys enjoy it, subscribe. And then also, if you have any guests you'd like to add on, because this isn't just about Kenson now. We want to bring people into the circle. And it's not just about men having fascinating conversations. We can have a woo man on the show. But this is just two guys having conversations right now, because that's all we are. Yeah. You feeling good about that? We need a tagline. You know how, like, Anchorman does keep it classy San Diego? Stiff drinks and stiff wood. Welcome to the Morningwood show. Over and out, baby. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'm going to stop recording.